On today's How to Survive, we're going to take a look at getting the Pinch Whacker and obviously the Berry Charm to make that toxic build that I really enjoy. I'm going to clear out the rest of the hedge areas, this particularly under hedge, and deal with a lot of all weavers, including a raid. All that plus the bird bath and mosquitoes. Leave a like if you find this series useful, and let's go. So I kicked off the day by going and getting some Mite Fuzz as I really wanted to get the Mite Hat. I absolutely love this with the Aphid Slippers. In early game, it gets you from A to B, and to me, it's always worth having, especially when you go and use some of your other mutations. You don't have to have your stamina mutations on because you'll get the Hyper Stamina from wearing the Mite Hat. And truly, the Aphid Slippers are some of the best gear you can get for helping you get across the yard super quick, especially when you start upgrading it and you unlock the Natural Explorer. That's the mutation that once you've discovered enough locations can make you zip around so much quicker. In combination with my grub vest and I would be flying around no problem. Do pay attention to your mutations and always feel free to move them around. It's always good to experiment as you might find that some aren't as useful until later in the game. I had the gas mask already because I'd already killed one of the stink bugs that I cheesed earlier. It can be a challenge killing them. The best bet is to get yourself very high and rain on them from up with lots of arrows or pretty much just keep strafing, running and hitting them with your arrows or ranged weapons. But I got one anyway and it was now time to go and explore a little bit of the rake rock as I wanted to get some more mites and see if I could get enough materials for some bombs. That's the main reason for venturing into the haze at this time. We need some of the fungal growth to make grenades so we can go and get the pinch whacker. You find plenty of carcasses of bugs around the side of the rock rake, although they don't always give you the exact same body parts as ones that you would kill yourself. But definitely still venturing over here, even without a mask, you'd probably run in and run out without dying. But it's these guys that I really want to take care of. This is the easiest way to get some fungal growth, as it's quick and easy that you can even lure them out of the haze if you don't want to spend too much time in there. Obviously they can make you lose your weapon, they're more of an annoyance than difficulty though. With that done, it was a quick hop over to grab some eggs from the red ant hill. And remember, if you haven't been killing a lot of ants, you may find there aren't that many eggs. So if you do see that there's not any there, go on a murderous rampage and the next day you should find plenty of eggs. Also I had a feeling that I'd be raided by spiders soon, as I'd killed a whole ton of them while going through the hedge, especially the spiderlings. The trophies that you can make from these give you a damage buff against them when you activate that trophy. So it's well worth in seeing if you've got enough extra bug parts and to make one of these trophies. So put that in the back of the mind and right now though where we're heading over to where the pinch whacker is. It's by the milk carton, just by the wall to the flower bed and parts of the upper pond. You'll need about six, maybe seven weed stems to go ahead and get this unless you're going to jump from the flower bed above, which you can kind of amble up using the grass blades and using a tuft to glide down. Instead, I took, yes, the most difficult route as I decided I wanted to get some more bug parts from the bombardier beetles. These guys become a lot easier to fight once you've got fresh defense enabled. That's the mutation that you eat 10 mints and you get level three. That will give you extra protection against fire and burn as well as sizzle damage. And this is why I mentioned their mutations to check which ones you've got equipped before going into battle properly. As I don't believe I had mine equipped, you can see the acid doing a huge amount of damage to me. In the end, I had to kill both of the bombardier beetles as they weren't leaving me alone as I was trying to get up here. It's almost directly from the milk carton when you stand on top of it, and you could even maybe try building from that if you, there is some way to connect. I do try using weed stems and stuff, and I know that a lot of people would probably use the clover ramps. It honestly took me a lot longer than I'm willing to admit, but you can tell the passage of time as it's quite a lot darker now. This definitely wasn't one of my most clever ideas. It's definitely easier to use either the clovers or like I said, jump from the top of the actual flower bed down. This is where the bomb comes in. Go ahead and throw it and stand well back or it could be curtains for you. You can die if you're caught in that with kind of low level armor. Once inside, you don't have to worry about enemies, and this is one of the guides that's been done to death a billion times. But here is the Pinch Whacker, and of course, the Berry Charm. We've kind of been building up to this Berry Charm, like I mentioned at the start, for a while now. We've collected some of the rotten weapons, and this is what's really going to make this build a lot better. You also get that upgrade loot in the chest as well, which is pretty nice. Now we can make our way and go and clear out the rest of the under hedge area. 
I ended up actually going back to base and sleeping through as it was quite dark and then came back. And first thing we had to do was kill some of these guys as I could do some body parts anyway to help build my trophy. Best way to kill these guys is with something spicy and using the spear is actually one of the worst ways to kill these guys as they are more resistant to stabbing and generic which is usually clubs. So axes, any blades, stuff like that is usually better. All weavers are also 50% more resistant against poison, so never really use a poison weapon, always use something different if you happen to come across one. And lastly, they are also a little bit resistant to fresh damage, so don't use anything fresh on them. While I yap, you can see we went into the forest homage. If you didn't know, the Grounded Devs are big fans of other survival games, and this particular area is in reference to the forest. In that game, you can put effigies of mutants all around and it stops other mutants from coming close or maybe hurting you. And in this case, it's just the red ants. It's a shame they don't actually do anything like that in Grounded. Now, we will be back here to do the mixers, but that's for another episode. It's time now to explore all of the under hedge area. As I said, it's worth doing the hedge in two or three stages. First stage to unlock the resource scanner, second stage to aim for doing the laboratory, and then the third stage to come back down here and clear out all the rest of it, and maybe go ahead and do the mixer. You can see there's plenty of raw science to pick up as you explore these parts, and there's a few upgrade rocks littered around if you know where to go. So while I'm showing you some of these locations for these rocks, as well as I can to get a scab, let's talk about the Pinch Whacker itself. It's more than likely going to be the first tier 3 weapon that you get, and considering we're only on day 9, that's pretty good. It does need glue to repair, which you can only get after going ahead and clearing out the Black Ant Lab. Of course, another way to repair it is by upgrading it, which you can also do. Periodically, when in combat, it will release a static lightning charge that can do extra stun damage. It's a great weapon to just use while you hit creatures, but also make sure that you charge it up when you're using it. Here you can see we've got the Legend Scab, a nice little golden one, and yeah, that's pretty much the Pinch Whacker. It does a huge amount of damage when you've held it up for a charge. It's technically a club, so that means it's a generic damage type. So if you're using the Barbarian Mutation, it should enhance it even more. I'm trying not to edit too much because I know some people complain that I go a bit quick sometimes. So I'm showing you that there's a milk motor right in the far corner. Now this has been one of the earliest ones, been there since the dawn of the milk motors were added. Keeping the wall of the house to your left, start heading back towards the paperclip where you first encountered or started exploring the hedge and you should come across this brutal quartzite. There's one also chest that I'll need to show you guys too. It might be tricky to spot, it's just pretty close to one of the branches going up, but here's a chest with some upgrade pieces and a meal. Now all we've got to do is go and clear out the bird bath. Make a pit stop, buy anything that you think you want from the science shop, or spend any of your molars if you haven't already. Make your way over to the first zip line and go down it. And now this time, instead of going up the actual mushrooms and over to the next laboratory, we're going to stay on this twig here. Definitely still advisable that you bring a tuft or two with you just in case. You can see with a nice big jump from one of these lower leaves here, you can actually get across and up to the burr path relatively easy. You gotta be a bit careful as it can be a bit finicky, but jump on top of these leaves here and you should be able to eventually climb onto the branch. Look out though, sometimes a little spiderling will attack you as it can appear and you should see it just near the broken zip line here. Once you've completed the bird bath, there really is no return unless you're going to be building a base here. Like, there's nothing that's going to be respawning that you need. There's plenty of other places that you'll find mosquitoes, which you're going to be battling against. And of course, you'll get all the resources that are here. So it's really not worth building a zip line or even the anchors that you can put into walls just to get over. Just hop across the leaves instead. And yeah, don't try killing a spiderling with your arrows. It's really not worth it. This is going to be a bit of a challenge. Unless you've got significant better gear, you may find it even too difficult, as three mosquitoes will start attacking you as soon as you get close enough. They can make you fall off the edge, that can also cause problems, but there is some respite. You can jump into the water and reheal, just like I'm doing here, and then go over to the other side and get yourself back together to maybe take them on. Now, chances are you haven't got any elemental weapons to really deal with these guys, although you can make fresh arrows as they are weak against fresh. Axes and blades are the best thing to take these guys down as well. And you can see here I'm using my poison build. I've got my rotten larvae blade. I've also equipped the berry charm, and that should be releasing a toxic cloud every now and then to deal with them. 
The worst thing you should be using against these guys is any kind of hammers or clubs. And if you can separate them a little bit, that's definitely worth doing too. Their dive bomb attack is the easiest one to block against with a shield. It's the stabbing one that can sometimes get you, as it can sometimes also do free stabbing attacks. And this is what can really do a lot of damage if you're not blocking correctly. They're also really fiddly because they will fly away. You tend to have to run backwards and then as they're charging you, run forwards to hopefully deal with them. You saw my toxic cloud hitting them there. That effectively does poison damage for a bit longer. At the top of the bird path in the pool, you should find another 100 raw science and a scab. A scab is hedgeberry. Your best bet is to just get the gold molar and then pick up the small upgrade pieces that are in the water and get out of here, rather than take these guys on this early. Or if you're coming back here a bit later with the right kind of gear and armor, it shouldn't be as much of a problem taking them on. But in the early days, this is a real challenge defeating three mosquitoes in a row unless you've got a ton of healing items on you. In this encounter, my actual rotten blade broke and then I had to resort to using my bee stinger. But I did eventually take this guy on. You can hop and jump and get at least one hit in normally when they're fairly close in the air. It is good if they do attack you though, as they'll fill up with the blood clots that you need, and this is what you're going to be making your heal basses with later. There's still one more mosquito to go, but I got the Mega Milk Molar, and now it's time to get the last little fragments that are in the water. You should come across some brittle marble right by the corner near the gold molar, then another piece on the corner and another one just here, and then one final one, four in total. I figured since I was up here anyway, I might as well finish the job and kill all three of them. This might be the first time you encounter mosquitoes, or unless you've gone over to the wetlands. Previously, they used to spawn even close to the pond areas, but now they changed it that in the first few days, in fact, until you go and hand in one of your first keys, they're not to meant to spawn in the starting areas. But yeah, then I realized that I could do with getting some more berry segments, so why not go and harvest the ones that I could? And yes, you can jump over and parkour amongst the leaves to get on top of the bird bath, but it's much easier doing it the way that I showed you. At this point, you want to hop down, pick up anything else you can need. I'm starting to see more of the crow feathers spawn now, so I could go ahead and harvest them since we've got a tier two axe. But we're not done yet. We need to go over to the tunnel and head back up to the hedge laboratory entrance. The doorway for this little tunnel or shortcut is usually locked until you go into the hedge and press the button for the first time. Once you get to the top, you'll see more remnants of the laboratory on the ground and a whole bunch of the orb weavers. It's why it might pay to, if you've got the stuff, make the actual trophy first for the orb weavers so you can get that extra damage against them. Weirdly, the spiderlings all decide to commit suicide around these parts. They generally fall or jump off of the laboratories above, so you might come across their carcasses or see them die before your eyes. But jump over in the corner and you'll see some more brittle marble, grab this. And then in the remnants of the broken laboratory, there should be another milk molar. For sure, you could have done all this in one go when you was actually doing the hedge lab. Maybe I should have included it in that, but I do believe it's worth coming over here a couple of times. Generally, if you do the hedge laboratory in the right way, you can avoid all weavers until now, and so you'd be much better equipped because you'd have more resources and a lot more molars that you would have upgraded clearing out the hedge lab. In between one of the branch or roots and the wall, you should find another quartzite shard to break open, but be on the lookout for the stink bug that lives around here too. So this is something I probably wouldn't recommend either, I'd come back here another time, but you can see the flower wall connecting, that will be where you'll find a Mega Milk Molar, which is hiding there as well. As long as you've got the speed to get away from, obviously, the stink bugs, it's worth doing, but otherwise we'll be back here anyway when we start to explore the upper yards and the upper pond. There is that 100 raw science nearby as well though. And then just head home, that's it, we've completed everything you can do and get inside the hedge areas. I went ahead and repaired all my materials and weapons, this time after running out of my rotten larvae blade on that adventure. And as I predicted, a raid was about to begin and it was all weavers attacking me. I quickly made the trophy that I needed. As I said, this will give you a buff for around 15 minutes doing a lot more extra damage against them creatures. I probably overdid it somewhat, as the first raids should be pretty light. It's only when you get to the end game that you might have waves and waves of all weavers attacking you. In the end, it was nothing more than a couple of all weaver juniors and one large all weaver. 
But the Pinch Whacker was doing its job. It was doing a lot of stun damage against them, and I quickly took them out. And that's pretty much where we're going to leave it today. That's how I survived getting the Pinch Whacker and clearing out the rest of the hedge, as well as my first raid. I finished off the job by upgrading some of the weapons and armors. And the next set of videos, we're going to be taking a look at the pond. Hope you found it useful. If you have, leave a like, and I'll see you at Bags for more soon. Bye-bye.